an overwhelming majority of our Christian people today listen to one form of rock music or another, and this does not include the children only, but the parents as well. It is also a fact that this type of entertainment is often allowed in our church halls to entertain our spiritually illiterate youth. The intent of this program is not to convince people to stop listening to this sort of music. It is a bit too late for that, especially since rock music is widely accepted not only in the Christian world in general, but also in our Orthodox youth groups, especially here in America. Our church leaders here in America are caught between a rock and a hard place in the fear that we may lose the youth unless we bow down to their wishes, we keep our eyes closed, and the result is devastating. Since illicit sex, drugs, and alcohol go hand in hand with this type of music, it will not take long to have these practices take place even on church properties. And here's the great falsehood. We're afraid that if we stay fir firm and un unyielding with our youngsters, we will force them out of the church. The truth is that the opposite takes place. When some well-meaning, born-again kids get a hold of our youngsters, they can very easily convince them that they don't have a church but a social club. We urge our Holy Fathers to reconsider and spend quality time with the youth. It takes a lot of work to educate and bring up soldiers for Christ. It takes a great deal of work, a great deal more than throwing them in a basketball court or a volleyball court and call it in the local DJ. Let's work while it is still day, for the night will come, and then we will not be able to do a thing. But let's see what our youth in Greece is being taught about rock and roll music from their spiritual father, Athanasios Mytilineos. Last Friday night, two people came to our monastery, and they happened to be from the police department of the city of the Caterini, which is about 50 miles from Larissa. They brought a poster that advertised, that was advertised at a movie theater of a city rock concert. And this poster was quite strange, kind of hard to imagine, and we will show you and try to explain it to you in a few minutes. And this is why the district attorney had to get involved. And of course, that upset the rock and rollers who began to object and complain that in many other cities their poster was openly displayed with no incident, namely in the city of Thessaloniki. While here in this city, they were being censored and harassed, so to speak. So here's this poster, and I will show you the original, and we'll pass it around for everybody to see. This poster says, Concert Heavy Metal. Vari Metalo, and here are the youngsters of Larissa. Got a kick out of this one. So let's watch carefully again. Heavy Metal with the following bands performing. Blues, Skirms, without a name. I guess they must be popular European bands. Three rock bands. In the middle of the poster, the devil is being displayed in the body of a robot. And as you can see here on the head of the robot, we have the name Lucifer, which is one of the official names of the devil, as you probably know. I'm sure you have seen this name written in many areas of our city by those that involve themselves with wall graffiti. 
So Lucifer, again, is the Latin for the Greek eosporos, or Satan, or devil. As I will tell you in the following, rock and roll is mainly an action or a movement of demonic waves. Pay attention here. We have this robot. It's one, it's one hand is made into a fist ready to punch. Punch what? Well, this other thing that it is holding with the other hand. And what do you think that might be? An Orthodox church. You can see the dome on top and the cross which is being crushed into pieces. Can you see this? Inside the church, in a small pamphlet, they write the number 666, which is the number of the beast. As you can see, Lucifer is the patron of rock music. Before I continue, I would like to ask a question. Would you go dance to this music now that you know that rock and roll music has the devil as its patron or lord? But let us continue. So these posters were posted on the walls on Friday, and the concert would take place a few weeks later in the city of Ekaterini in an auditorium. As you well know, records of rock and disco and top 40s are always being sold, and these records have some extreme sat satanic dimensions to them. Fortunately, not all records are like this, not all of them, but nevertheless, there are some records which have been circulating in Greece that are produced, of course, in the United States, and they are characterized as satanic records. I have a newspaper article, which is a letter sent to the editor by uh, Dr. Peter Kutsungos, a professor at the University of Patras, and he happens to be a scientist teaching in the chemistry department of Patras. Let's listen to what he writes. He's talking about Robert Dorman, a Republican senator from the state of California, who introduced a bill concerning records that use backward masking or records that use subliminal messages. As you probably know, records spin clockwise, that is from right to left. I'm sorry, from left to right. Now, the same record, by changing the movement of the turntable motor, can be played backwards or in reverse. Then you hear other things and other messages all together in the same tracks with reverse movement. You hear different messages being recorded. This is called, as I explained to you, backward masking. So the production companies of these records would be obligated to report or make visible on the album cover that these records use the technique of backward masking. These records, again, contain a certain message which can, be, which can be discovered only when the record is played backwards. The reason why these records must have a label on the album cover is because even though these messages cannot be heard while the record is being played under normal conditions, however, these messages have the ability to slip and be recorded in the subconscious mind. How do these things slip into the subconscious? The messages we could hear if the record was played backwards. My friends, it is dreadful how the subconscious picks this up. Maybe we will elaborate on this a little more later if time permits. There are many rock and roll albums which entertain a good marketing success, of course, and they contain messages which actually praise Satan, just as this poster here. So Senator Dorman is totally justified in considering this type of thing very dangerous and fraudulent, and the consumers must be warned. Without naming the albums, the Senator mentions some of the messages 
that he uncovered in his research. Let's listen to what these records are telling the listeners. Satan moved through our voices and sounds. Satan, Satan, Satan. He is God. I live for Satan. And another one, I live for Satan. I don't like God. I cannot escape him. He's my sweet Satan. Satan's strong. He will give you the 666. In other words, the Antichrist. My friends, these things are written in the records, and the person who is dancing to this type of music is obviously hearing all this because these are actually hidden in the songs of the rock and roll music. So the senator asks to have this bill voted into a federal law, so whenever a record company has a product of this nature, with these messages, that is, they must provide an appropriate warning. He believes that this is not simply a question of good advertising and good ethics, but the real meaning of this is to properly inform the young consumers and their parents that these ever so popular rock records contain messages which offer praise and worship to Satan. James Gilbert, a Protestant pastor of Texas, realizing the danger of this for some time, published, published an article in reference to these records in 1981. A very popular song by the group Queen, Another One Bites the Dust, contains and repeats this phrase, Decide to smoke marijuana or pot. Also, according to our own friend and brother from Australia, Andreas, who has reached great heights in the arena of rock and roll music, and who is circulating a videotape, which is now available in some parts of the country, according to Andreas, also Led Zeppelin, and the song Stairway to Heaven is probably the best example for this type of backward masking, which we will listen to in a few seconds. The interesting thing that Andreas explains is that he himself has experience with this type of backward masking firsthand. One of his theories, and he truly believes this, is that some of this backward masking, masking takes place unbeknownst to the performance of the rock and roll bands. This happened to several of his songs as well. He believes that one of the reasons this takes place is because of the involvement on, of evil spirits. It is a known fact that some satanic bands, bands that actually worship Satan, when they record an album, they actually have a service, a satanic service, where a witch or a, or a wizard will invoke the evil spirits and the spirit of Satan to eulogize and bless the album to guarantee the album's success. So once again, Andreas happens to believe that this type of thing happens by the wisdom of the devil and his ultimate attempt to be worshipped. And now let's listen to a small segment of the song by Queen, another one bites the dust. And now let's listen to that segment played backwards. No 
So the devil wants us to smoke marijuana so we can certainly bite the dust. And now let's listen to the song by Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven. And now the same segment played backwards. Even though some of the sentences are not very clear, the sentence here is to my sweet Satan is quite clear. And of course, Satan is not sweet at all. So these are the messages that actually find their way into our subconscious by listening to this type of music over and over again, especially when we use headphones. I'm sure that all of us have a set of headphones somewhere, and this helps all of the above to become accentuated. Let's imagine this. If we are sitting next to a smoker and we're inhaling the nicotine from the air, and now we take the nicotine and inject it into our bloodstream with a needle, do we believe that there is a difference? Certainly there will be a difference, a tremendous difference. When I simply listen to rock and roll music, I get hurt. But when I use the headphones, something strange takes place, some sort of power through suggestion, especially when the phrase is repeated over and over and over again. It has been observed that this power of suggestion repeated in the specific rhythm of rock and roll music reaches a point where it is easily passed into the subconscious. For instance, whatever I dream in my sleep is a positive proof that this has passed into my subconscious. As you know, we have a great number of things that pass into our subconscious mind. So you see now how this works how these messages slip into the subconscious mind. And continuing, he says the following, as you saw previously, rock music gets involved with drugs also. As we will elaborate a little later, another song of the Rolling Stones, Sympathy for the Devil, has become unofficially the national anthem for the satanic cults and Satanists. Mick Jagger, the lead singer, is often referred to as the demon of rock. Mr. Gilbert had a series of lectures and seminars in schools and churches declaring that all of the above consists of an organized attack of satanic forces and so on and so forth. He also includes in this the top groups such as Led Zeppelin, Fleetwood Mac, the Eagles, and the Rolling Stones, let alone the heavy metal groups which make themselves obvious. So what can you say about all this? Let's see, my friends. Why is this music so destructive? It is known that music has always civilized and pained people. At all times, music has been known to tame and soothe. Remember Saul in the Old Testament, who was possessed by a demon of sadness and depression. He was asking David to play some music to make him snap out of it and to make him feel better. Here, something entirely different is happening, and this something has never taken place in the entire history of music. This is a first. We have classical music, we have music of opera, folk songs, country songs, and ballads. We have international folk music. Rock music has something else. Nobody ever had been harmed so much with all the other types of music as much 
was from rock and roll music. And why is this? Let's listen closely. Rock music, according to Elvis Presley, who died from a drug overdose, comes from the jungle. Elvis mentioned that the best rock music is the music of the jungle. In other words, to take the music from the natives of the African jungles, which is being used for their services and liturgies to the demons. They worshipped idols, and behind the idols are the demons themselves. For you to understand this, let's say that we have the Byzantine music, which we call holy music and sacred music. When we hear it, and this might answer some of your questions as to why we don't use modern music in our churches, just like the European or Western denominations, why don't we have instruments like guitars, drums, etc.? Why isn't this allowed? Well, instruments and this type of music belong to the stage and to the theaters and are worldly. They belong to the world. This sort of music does not inspire people in godliness or spirituality. Some people may have some emotional uplifting from this, but it is nothing sacred. It is instrumental music. In our church, therefore, we do not have instruments. We have a vocal music, so our Byzantine music is sacred music. When you hear it, you don't feel like dancing, or you're not stirred up sexually or anything of that nature. It is simply sacred music which subdues the passions of a person and elevates the person towards God. Consequently, it is music of worship. Now, as Byzantine music being music of worship of the true God subdues the passions and elevates to heaven in the same manner, rock music being the music of the cannibals of the jungle serves as music of worship towards the devil. This is why it is so harmful, because it is ritualistic music. That is why, my friends, finding along with the rock music, serving as a vehicle, we find widespread devil worship. In essence, just like with the Byzantine music, I worship the true God, and it becomes a vehicle of the worship of the true God, in the same fashion, now we have rock music serving as the vehicle of devil worship. And wherever Satan enters, we have a mess. He turns everything upside down. So please, as you understand, be careful when it comes to the music of this type. Because people who dance to it actually give an open invitation to the demons. They suffer possession. Should I prove it to you? There's no need to. Whoever heard of a rock concert in an enclosed space or indoors without riots or destruction, or even outdoor concerts which started about 20 to 25 years ago in England with the Beatles and some of the other groups, and they were everywhere in the whole world. They performed in the United States, Canada, and Australia. The fans would literally find themselves in a craze, and after coming out of the concert, they would begin to act like a band of vandals, barbarians, destroying anything and everything in front of them. They would break straw windows, overturn automobiles. They would level everything. What does this show? Does this music relax and calm people's spirit? Does it civilize? Does it elevate people's spirits? Does it subdue people's passions? Does it again civilize the population? Or does it push people into the nets of Satan? No, this type of music has nothing to do and nothing to offer to Christians, let alone Orthodox Christians. What do you think happens in the type of atmosphere that this type of music is constantly played. An actual work of the evil spirits, the demons, takes place. There's also something else. From the confessions of some people that used to spend time in nightclubs and places of partying, so to speak, according to their experiences, 
In these places, illegal drugs or narcotics move freely. Rock music advertises drugs in certain songs, and this is extremely dangerous. And you should understand this once and for all. Inside the atmosphere of nightclubs and cafes or discos, disco spots, drugs are ever-present. Please realize this. Yes, my friends, realize it. A teenager some time ago was telling me he was actually close to being 20 years old. He went to a cafe, and they simply asked for a cup of coffee, and there were five or six people in his group. Another group came at the time, at the same time with a few more people, and the first group was asked to move to another room to make room for the other people as well. So they took their cups and they went to another table provided by the waiter. And what happened? A little mix took place, mix up. This young person took the cup of the person sitting next to him once again by mistake, which had something in it, specifically a tablet of a certain drug. Someone threw it into the cup of the friend, not knowing to this day if the person next to him knew about it or not. You heard of LSD? I'm sure you have. This is extremely dangerous. It is not as safe as some people would like to think. We have seen its consequences with our own eyes, how dreadful it is and how addictive and to what degree this addiction can lead. It actually destroys the DNA molecules in the cells. Do you know what DNA is? It is the molecule in the cell that contains the hereditary traits and transmits these traits to the descendants. So it alters and destroys the DNA of the cells. This LSD is horrible, and these drugs are suggested and advertised in some of the albums of the rock and roll music. Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds by Elton John, for instance. But let's return to the young man who drank his cup of coffee with a pill. Now, what kind of pill was it? Nobody really knows. The fact is he began to hallucinate, or as commonly called, he began to trip. The tripping of drugs, the so-called high, and some of you may be curious, so out of curiosity, you may want to try it. Try it just one time. Well, it's like taking a revolver and planting a bullet in your head to experience what happens to a person when he plants a bullet in his head. It would be the first and last experience, correct? Listen to why this is the first and last experience. This person came and told me all about this incident, and I told him, do you see, my son, how terrible drunks can be? So be very careful, because without really wanting to, just because you go to places such as these, you came to try your drug. Be extremely careful in the future, and do not go or spend time in these places, because I really don't know what can happen to you. His answer was, yes, Father, but do you know how nice it was? In other words, he was hooked. He fell into the trap of the drug, so to speak. That's why I told you, you try it once and you're dead. If you try it at one time, be sure to know that you will ask for it again. You did it for the second time or the third time, and you're surely on the path of drug addiction. And what's the reason for this? There are many reasons why people get introduced to drugs, but one of the pathways is through rock and roll music. The rock and roll music also, my friends, initiates and promotes sexual immorality. So once again, we have rock and roll music being a ritualistic music, music of the cannibals, music offered to Satan. That's why, as a carrier, it entered today's societies bringing along with it, the worship of the devil. We want to emphasize that this is true not only for hard rock or heavy metal, but soft rock, medium rock, any kind of rock, all rock and roll music does not elevate spiritually, and it is used by the Antichrist to bring in the masses. I'm sure you heard of the band ACDC, meaning... Antichrist, death to Christ, and also the band Kiss, 
not knights in service for Satan. Let us become soldiers in service for Christ and eliminate this type of music from our church grounds and property. Amen.